Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about certificates and in this case, when are you ready to take the CCSA? And first of all, what type of certificate is actually the CCSA? Well, it's a theoretical exam, so there's no simulation, there's no lab. There will be multiple choice questions to check if you know the concepts, if you know how to configure things. But there will be no lab that you can actually configure something, so there will be like what type of command is it to actually configure this? And that's how they will check if you know how to configure it. And if there are uh, questions like multiple choice questions, maybe they ask you like, what, uh, what best describes the checkpoint three tier architecture? And then you will get multiple choice questions and then they actually know if you understand the concepts of it. So if we check the certificate itself, First of all, you can order it on person view. So here you actually do the certificate and you do it online. So you don't need to go to a test center. Uh, I guess this is, um, well, the new world after COVID. Um, I don't know how long it will be like that, but you can expect the test centers to be closed quite a while, at least a few months more. So when it comes to the CCSA, uh, here is the frequently asked questions regarding R80. And you see here it's from 2016, so nothing much has changed on this. And we can see here that you take it in person view. And uh, the exam is about 90 minutes and it's 90 questions. If you're a non-English speaker, you will get additional time. I think it's like additional 20, 30 minutes. You, you will see everything like this when you actually schedule the exam. I, I would say like this make sure to schedule it because if you don't schedule your exam you will push it forward all the time and you will not be quite ready so you actually need a goal you need something to aim for more or less you need a deadline and if you're not used to having a deadline well get used to it because within the security world and the network world there will be deadlines all the time and you will need to meet them and if you don't meet them you need to have a valid reason for not meeting them. So my recommendation is first of all, just to schedule the exam so you have a date to like prepare for. You know what you need to know. And this is the date that you will actually write the certificate. So I will just take it like a parallel. Uh, my wife just started her driving school and she has a driver's license in her own country, but it's different in Sweden and she need to retake it. So more or less, we signed her up for driving school and we bought like a pre-made packet where you actually get like uh, 10 driving lessons and you get uh, risk analyze and you get the test and so on. There are many different parts of taking a driver license in Sweden, but uh, well, you buy a packet. So when she have this packet now, well, then the school itself, they make a plan, a detailed plan. You more or less say to them like, how quick do you want to take your driver license? And you say like, yeah, I want to have it in three months. Then they take these 10 lessons and they just space them out. Um, so you have the, enough time to prepare between each lesson, but you will have like a goal to have your driver license in three months. And you need to do the same. You need to make a plan and you need to set the time frame. Like I want to have this within six weeks, 12 weeks. And more or less, it depends on how much time are you willing to study, how much time are you willing to take, and how much time can you actually afford to give this. And this will be different from person to person. I mean, if you have a family, if you have kids and so on, it's, it's harder to, to take time off to actually study. But for example, if you take one hour per day for six weeks, that's like 40 hours of efficient study. So just the comparison, if we check the real course, we have it here. So the course, the course itself is three days. And keep in mind, if you're writing the, the certificate, it's not enough that you only go to this course. Because if you check the course details and pre-required, they expect you to have certain level of knowledge. They expect you to have basic network knowledge. They expect you to have six to one, six months to one year actually experience with Checkpoint products. So what that means is that it's not enough that you go to the course and then you write the certificate. 
if if you do that and you actually pass well congratulations uh, you have done something that is quite hard um when i did take my own certificate like six maybe it's 10 years ago now <laughs> time goes fast um i have worked with networking for like four years like cisco stuff and then i had worked with uh, checkpoint for maybe let's say four months back and forward but i at least know how to do the rules and all of that stuff and then i did do the the official course three days and i actually wrote the certificate the last day as well and i passed with one point so i mean it was a pass but i thought it was really hard and i actually studied quite a lot on the evenings after the specific uh, course so that's also something to keep in mind if you go on a course like this maybe that's between uh, uh, 10 a.m and uh, 6 p.m you can expect that you need to put a few more hours to actually keep up with the course because there is a lot of information that you should cover within these three days and to be honest most of these three days is actually labbing so they expect you to know the concepts to actually study what you what you need to learn and most of the days will be to do a practical exams to actually configure things so you can have a higher level of learning meaning you can actually not only describe the concepts but you can configure it and you can sometimes even troubleshoot it so when it comes to like knowledge i see it as maybe four different levels so first of all you have like i know this concept and second level is like i can configure this and third level is i can troubleshoot this and the fourth and last level i can teach this meaning you can explain to someone else how to actually do this. But what I see many people that actually take their certificate, they know how to configure it. They know how to maybe to troubleshoot it, but they don't understand the concepts. So they have skipped the first part. And if you skip the first part, like the concept of it, well, then you cannot apply it in real world. Because in the real world, there will be more than, check, than checkpoint products. You actually need to like communicate with the Cisco, uh, Cisco router, Cisco switch. You need to integrate with VMware. You need to do more things. So to, to actually do all the levels, like from level one to let's say level three for, for at least something, don't skip level one. Understand the concepts because the concepts is the core knowledge that you actually need to remember, that you need to understand. The configure it and troubleshoot it, you can Google. So the concept is the most important to build your foundation to actually learn this stuff. Then for the exam itself, you need to know how to apply this, meaning you need to know how to configure it. And in some, case, in some cases, you actually need to learn how to troubleshoot it. Okay, so I guess you have heard all this already. So how do you actually know that you're ready? Well, first of all, we have this study template. So scroll down the study template and check like which part is actually covered within the course, which part is actually covered within the certificate. And don't just take this lightly and just scroll by, actually read it and more or less uh, decide like, am I on a level one or a level four or a three or whatever on these specific topics? How much do you actually know? And are you skipping some parts? For example, I don't like VPNs. That's why I haven't made a video about it. I, I tried to move it forward, but people are asking about VPN videos. So I guess I need to fix it someday, but do the same here. Just scroll by, check what type of uh, information is it included. And if you scroll down here more, then you see objectives and you see questions. First of all, can you answer all of these questions? Like the Gaia commander turns the computer off. Computer off? Is that the reboot? I don't know. Uh, but more or less, can you answer all of these questions? Um, if you can, that's perfect. Then you have done a lot. 
Uh, and some here is actually like pictures from the actual uh, uh, software. Like, what does this mean? So this is a good like study template to follow. And if you can um, do all this, then you're a good set. But I actually found one more site that Checkpoint officially have. And that this one. And this is practice exams or practice questions. I know there has been a few people that actually ask me for like, do you have any practice exam do you recommend for this certificate? And so far I have said like, don't use practice exam because then you will only learn the, the answer to specific questions, the brain dumps more or less. And if you want to see a video regarding the, the brain dumps and stuff, well, click above and uh, I have one for you. But this is actually official question from Checkpoint that is quite good. So one thing that is hard with certificates is like, okay, is this right or is this the Checkpoint way? And the general rule of when it comes to certificate is like, think about how Checkpoint see it. So there is a world outside Checkpoint. I know it's scary, but there is a way that Checkpoint wants you to answer the questions and there is maybe the right way. Uh, and this can give you a feeling like how is the certificate questions actually written? So you can get like, do I have enough uh, knowledge? Do I have enough uh, uh, English skills to actually pass this? Um, and you can have like um, different questions for different chapters. So you can like, I, I know all the questions for the first five chapters, then you can study more on the on the later one. So this is a good example, and this is how it looks. So if you press here, chapter one, practice exam, then you get like um, chapter one, um, and here is the, the question itself, and this is the, the answers that you can pick. So if you check this one, in the checkpoint security management architecture, which components can store logs? So the smart console, well, that doesn't show the logs, but it doesn't store logs, it only display the logs for you. Uh, checkpoint security management server and security gateway. Security management server and smart console and security management server. Well, um, the logs can be stored locally on the gateway and in the management server and in the log server. So in this one, this would be my answer and I hope it's correct. And it is ah, wonderful. <laughs> uh, but you actually get the feeling like you can try all this, uh, these questions and you can see how good are you and um, well, try it out. Just see how it goes. But my recommendation is still make sure to schedule your, your exam and schedule it enough time in advance so you don't get stressed, but you still have some pressure and you have a deadline. Because if you have some sort of pressure, you will perform better. Because you, you will get like the feeling like I need to do this. And don't just push it forward. Try it. I mean, the worst that can happen is that you spend your money. You spend that $200 on an exam and fails. But you gain experience. You gain experience on how the certificate looks like what type of question it is and what you actually need to be better on. And I will say like this, you haven't failed if you stop, if you not stop trying. So if you just do one certificate uh, attempt and you fail it and then you skip it, well, then you have failed. But if you fail the first attempt and then study like a maniac and try once more and pass it, you will feel great. No one cares if you pass it on the first or third or fourth attempt. The important is that you actually um, gain the knowledge and know how to apply it. And I personally, I, I respect people more if they have failed an exam and then um, get the grip on them and try it again. It's a, it's a difference about going to a certificate and just writing it and hope for the best. I don't recommend that. Even if you have worked with Checkpoint for a long time, 
you need to fresh up on your basic knowledge because certificates are a different thing. They take up stuff that you actually don't work with all the time. So try to, to read the study guides, try to do the, the practice exams here and don't beat yourself up if you fail it. You can always try again. So I think this is it. Thank you for watching and please comment below like when are you going to take your certificate? What certificate are you going to take? Or is a certificate just bullshit that you don't need them? If you have enough experience, well, maybe you don't need them, but you need them for partnership and to be able to do support cases and so on. So I hope you actually write it and take some certificates. It's, it's nice to have. Um, I myself, I'm going to schedule like my CCSM really soon. I haven't decided for a date yet. I will, uh, hopefully after CPX and CPX is just around the corner. Um, because I'm recording this in, um, well, the day before CPX uh, 2021, actually. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.